welcome to Erin channel, and welcome back to Sheet Metal Course. After a bit of theory in the previous section, we are now going to start looking at adding some actual features. Open our existing base flange bar, and it should look something like this. If you've got any extra flanges or any extra features on there, just delete those, and then we'll edit this base flange bar, and we'll make sure that we're all starting from the same page. All we want is a center rectangle fixed to the origin, so delete any other smaller profiles within there, and then set the size as 200mm wide and 100mm high, just so we're all on the same page here. Then when that's done, exit that sketch, and we should just have a single rectangular base flange like this. Next, let's edit the sheet metal folder, and just double check that we've got a thickness of 1mm, and a pen radius of 1mm. And then we can exit editing that feature. Pen edges called edge flanges are one of the most basic and common features in sheet metal. If we wanted to make this base flange into a box, then we'd have to add some extra pen up walls called edge flanges. And these flanges really are the workhorse of sheet metal. We'll use them all the time. To add the edge flange, select the edge flange feature from the sheet metal toolbar, which is this one. And as usual in SOLIDWORKS, we get a lot of options here on the left. We don't necessarily have to use all of these, so don't worry if it looks a bit daunting. The most important ones are just the angle, the flange length, and also the edge where we want to add the flange. The first thing that we need to do is choose this edge. Make sure we are in this edge selection box at the top, so make sure it's blue. And then we zoom in in our model, and select one of the edges. I'm gonna select the short edge here. We should get a yellow preview. You can't really see much at the moment on my video, but as we zoom out and move the mouse around, we can see that the preview follows the mouse. I'm just gonna drag the preview up like this, and then left click once. Now we've set the rough size of our edge flange, and we can move over to the left and set the parameters a bit more specifically. Up here at the top, we have the bend radius. This is the radius of the inside of this pen, and this is the global value that we set in the earlier videos when we edited the sheet metal folder. This will be the same for every pen in our model, but we can actually override it for specific pens. If we uncheck this use default radius box, then we can change the pen radius here. And we should see, as I change the size here, we can actually see the pen radius changing in the preview. We'll just stick with the default for now, so I'm gonna put another check in the box, and it goes back to 1mm. The next thing to set the angle of the bend, which is down here. As we change the value here, we should be able to see it actually changes the angle of the edge flange in the graphics area. And if I move the model around from the side, we can see it's a bit more obvious there. I'm going to put that back to 90 degrees. And then the next important parameter is the flange length, which is down here. As we change the value here, we can see that the preview changes in the graphics area. We can also flip the direction of the flange by clicking this reverse direction button. There's also some different options for the end condition of the flange. We'll stay with apply. And that just means that the length of this flange is whatever value we put here. Now, one thing about the flange length is, where do we measure it from? Depending on how we measure it, we'll get a different length. We have three options here, and hopefully you can see them sort of explained on the little icon. The first one is called the outer virtual sharp, and as we can see from the icon, this measures from the sharp corner where the outer face would be. If we go to side view and zoom in a bit, we can see this a bit more obviously. This measures from the outer face of our base flange to the top of our flange. The second option is called Inner Virtual Sharp. We don't have to remember these names, we can just look at the icon. This one measures from the sharp corner of the inner face. And if you look at the preview, we can see as I switch between these two options, the length of the flange at the top there actually changes. So this one is measured from the inside face to the top of the edge flange. The third and final option is called the Tangent Pen. And this measures from the outside of the pen. In this case, it's the same as the first option because our pen's at 90 degrees. If we've got a different angle, then it will give us a different result. Often, I just leave this on the first option, unless you specifically want another one, 
but it doesn't really matter if you use the first or the second one as long as we are consistent and we've got the length that we want on the flange there. Another parameter that might be important is where is the flange actually positioned? Do we want the material inside or outside the base flange? If we look at these icons, then we can see which of the options suits you best. And this really depends on what our trying to make. Usually one of the first three options will be used. If we zoom in, we can have a closer look at how these work. So the first option here puts the flange material inside the base flange footprint. The second one puts the flange material outside of the footprint of the base flange. But actually, we can see because of the bend shape, some of the bend area is still within the base flange. So the third option, bend outside, means the entire bend is added onto the base flange size. And these final two options are only really used in specific circumstances. So I'd recommend sticking with one of the first three, unless we want to use the others for a very specific reason. And down here, we've just got a few more options that we'll cover in more detail later in the course. We can set a custom bend allowance or custom relief type. For now, let's just set a 90 degree bend. Make it 50 millimeters long with the first option there, outer virtual sharp. And let's stick with the first option here for the flange position. Then press OK. Now our first feature, the edge flange, is created. And we can see the edge flange here in the design tree. In the next video, we'll look at these edge flanges in a little bit more detail. But for now, just to recap this, I'm going to delete the edge flange feature and just quickly show you that again. To use the edge flange, all we have to do is select the edge flange feature and then choose the edge where we want to add the flange. Then we can set the angle and the flange length, which are the two most important options. And we can choose the flange position and a lot of smaller sub-options if needed. And it's as simple as that. As we mentioned, in the next video we'll look at the edge flanges in more detail. So for now we can save our part and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you like, I hope it can be a little helpful and useful.